Hey everybody and welcome back to another Max Velocity weather forecast and in today's forecast we'll be breaking down two large storms that are likely going to be impacting the United States as we go into January and these are going to cause a lot of problems if they end up happening because we're going to be watching for a winter storm threat out of both of these storms and additionally there will be a threat for some severe weather as long as everything materializes in the long-term forecast. I'll be giving you the latest breakdown on everything that you need to know in this forecast and let's first begin with what's happening right now in the United States and we'll begin with the Midwest and this is an area that's been quite active over the last several days now and we actually have a new little clipper system that just came out of Canada that's rolling through the Midwest and the Great Lakes there's been some snowfall with this but nothing too crazy a coating to maybe an inch in some areas notice the low pressure system this evening is located over near Chicago kind of in northern Indiana and notice there are a little bit of areas of snow and rain ongoing in parts of the northeast but again it's nothing too impactful here this is a pretty small storm overall that's ongoing in the united states on the flip side of things the southeast much drier than what we've seen the last several days and it's also much colder cold air mass right now in the entire southeast quadrant of the united states and that'll continue by the way all the way into the first week of january and the, the southern plains we also have some cloud cover down there the northern plains quite dry for now and then the west coast of the united states has actually been very active over the last several days very high waves along the California coastline. We've been watching uh, multiple storms off coast that have been bringing a little bit of rainfall inland. This has also driven some waves on shore across the west coast of the United States. All right, let's talk more about the weather pattern that'll be impacting the United States as we go throughout the first couple of weeks of 2024. And to look at that, we're going to look at the jet stream. And right now, what we have ongoing across the United States, we have a trough located over in the Great Lakes. We also have a ridge that's dominating parts of the Rocky Mountains and back through the Great Plains that's leading to drier and warmer weather for the time being. But that'll not last too long because as we go into this week, things are going to become pretty active, especially since we are heading into an El Nino winter. We are expecting a lot more active weather across the southern tier of the United States. So this is by Tuesday. Notice we'll actually have a trough building in the southern plains. That'll be including areas like Texas, Oklahoma, Arkansas, and Louisiana. And this area in particular, I'd be a bit more concerned about there for some showers and some storms. We might even see a little bit of snow out of this system. I'll show you more on that here in just a moment, but a better chance for a winter storm and as well as heavier rainfall that could lead to even some severe weather would be going closer to the weekend. So notice by about January 5th and 6th, so this is Friday and Saturday, we'll be looking at a trough building over the central and southern plains, pretty much coming from the same area, but this low pressure system is expected to be stronger. And if that ends up happening, we're gonna have a very strong southwesterly flow on the east side of this trough that'll lead to basically a better environment for some severe weather and we'd be also looking at a potential for a winter storm on the north and west side of this low pressure system. So basically a dual threat trough would be the potential as we go into Friday into Saturday. And notice this low pressure system going into Saturday into Sunday. It really races off to the north and east, potentially impacting the New England region and as well as back through the Great Lakes. But that's not all. Again, I said multiple storms. We'll have another one most likely as we go into early the following week. So near January 8th and 9th. And look at this one. The European model, this is again 200 hours out, so things might change change but I do want to point out that the European model is driving the storm as a fairly potent and strong storm and if we see something like this we would obviously have a lot of winds near the surface meaning some wind gusts we'd also be looking at the potential for another winter storm threat and as well as maybe some severe weather down on the eastern and southeastern side of that trough so a lot of things to really break down with these different systems and obviously since we are still seven to ten days out things can change on both of these storms but we obviously have to watch them pretty closely because over the next 14 to 17 days. These are the really the main two that I've been looking at on the long-term computer models that have the best potential at this point to be something a bit bigger than what we've seen over the last few weeks. All right, let's talk more about the future radar now, break this down a bit more in detail for you with the different types of precipitation and where there might be some severe weather. So going through Tuesday, I love a ridge dominating in the Southeast United States, but that will not last long because as we go into Tuesday night and Wednesday, we'll have a low pressure system that's gonna probably ride right along the Gulf Coast. And if this ends up happening, Happening. We'll be looking at showers and storms primarily across the Gulf Coast. It will be cold enough if we actually see a little bit of cold air infection on the back side of this. We might get a couple of snow flurries going to Wednesday morning, perhaps in Oklahoma or Arkansas. The chance overall has actually been going down over the last few days. Initially, this low pressure system was forecasted to stay a bit further up to the north, primarily back up here in Oklahoma and Arkansas. Now it's dropped to much further down to the south. So mainly showers and storms across the Gulf Coast with this particular system. On the flip side, 
a little clipper system again back over into the Great Lakes as we go into Wednesday. That'll bring some light snowfall. Nothing more than an inch, though, of snow is expected out of that. Going to Thursday, that low pressure system moves toward the east coast. I don't foresee a nor'easter out of this. I think it'll stay well out to the east, and I don't think it's going to become very intense, but we might get a little bit of snowfall in the northeast as we go throughout the day Thursday. Our next really large storm that's in the forecast at this point will be closer to Friday, and this would be it right here. So as we go into Friday, we're going to start to see some showers across the central and southern plains, maybe even a little snow aspect in Colorado and as well as Kansas. And this will grow in size as we go throughout Friday into Saturday. And this is what the European model is doing with it. It's actually keeping it pretty far down to the south. And obviously, this can easily change. We could see this be further up to the north. We could also see it be down here further down to the south. And whichever one happens will change really the outcome of who sees snow or who sees severe weather and that sort of thing. But what we'll have to watch for with this particular storm going into Friday into Saturday would be the severe weather threat across the Gulf Coast and the southeast United States. And then off to the north, we'd be watching for more of that winter storm potential. And this would definitely be something to watch for across the Midwest. I don't know if we'll see it this far down to the south. Again, this could very easily change. So again, some uncertainty definitely still remains with this. Once we go into Sunday and the Monday, there is some increase in confidence that we might see some sort of nor'easter. But again, since we are still talking about seven days out, I really think things could still change with this. I, this is definitely not set in stone. I know some people think it's definitely going to happen. I don't think it's definite at this point. I think there definitely could be some changes to this. And then once we go into Monday and a Tuesday, another large storm definitely could be in play here across the United States. And if we see something like this, obviously very intense low pressure system that the European model is showing, I don't know if it'll be this strong. Again, we're still talking about almost 10 days out with this particular storm. So stay tuned, make sure you're subscribed to the channel, and we will keep you posted with the layoffs and everything that you need to know. Here's a low level jet, by the way. This gives us an idea of the rotation in the lower levels with supercells. And the reason why I'm showing this is because of the severe weather threat that we might see going into Saturday and maybe even into Sunday across the southeast. The low level jet will be cranking upwards of 60 to 70 knots, and that would definitely be favorable for some sort of tornado risk across the Gulf Coast. But again, with the positioning of that trough as we go into the upcoming weekend, things might change a little bit with where it is. So obviously, stay tuned. We'll keep you posted with the latest on that storm as well. The temperatures are going to be a big factor over the next several days because we'll have multiple troughs coming in, meaning some colder air will start to usher in. But for the time being, colder than normal weather will continue in the southeast United States with all these numbers meaning in Fahrenheit how much it'll be different from the average temperature in your location. So upwards of 10 to 15 degrees below average will continue in the southeast United States as we go into Tuesday. By Wednesday and Thursday, that cold air really not moving anywhere across the east coast. Once we get closer to Friday and Saturday, though, that is when warm air continues across the Midwest. And then we'd be watching for some colder air to usher in behind those two troughs as we go into the following week. But again, this is still a bit of an uncertainty point. If we do see a strong trough like the European model is showing, it would bring a pretty large cool down. But again, there's some uncertainty there with this system. Again, we'll keep posted with the latest. Make sure you're subscribed to the channel and like the video. P